Call this meeting to order. Stand for the pledge. Pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Amador couldn't be here tonight with us, but everybody else is present. This is a work, this is a work session for a budget, for the budgets. In addition to the regular school board meetings, the board also convenes in work sessions and other special meetings. The school board holds work sessions to engage and disclose and discuss specific topics to greater depth, study difficult issues, collaborate, gather, and or analyze information and or clarify problems. Work sessions are open to the public, but comments are normally not accepted for transparency purposes. You may address the board questions, must be in writing, written. Please keep questions and or, or comments brief and pertain to the topic of the work session. The superintendent will accept and review all written questions upon acceptance of the questions. It is upon the discretion of the president to address. At this time, I will introduce Caleb Russell to do a budget, budget presentation. I wouldn't quite call it exactly, but I gave everybody a copy. I kind of wanted this work session so that we could discuss things going on with the budget because this is a, uh, an unusual year. One, in that the governor is proposing some large cuts, but two, that we have uh, the cumulative effect of constant state aid cutting. So I have a couple of documents on here. I'll just, oh, you can't hear back there. It records it. You have to have it on to have it recording. Okay. So which sheet are we looking at first? So let's start, well, let's start with the budget itself and go to the very first one, the revenue. So I can show you what's going on there. So the revenue I have on this budget uh, is including a 4.28%. That includes us going to the cap, right? <clears throat> We're losing a pilot. That's the Millennium Pipeline. So $121,000 of our cap is replacing that. It's not new money. It's nothing extra that we're getting. All right, when you go down into student fees, these student fees, and this has not been enacted yet, but this is a potential uh, item, um, is if we require students to pay the full cost instead of one third of the college. So that $37,500 is the total tuition to Sullivan County Community College. Currently, we only collect 12,500. So that will reduce by 25 if we decide that we're not gonna do it that way and we're still gonna only collect one third. Um, the 25,000 tuition from other schools is a foster student we have from an out of district placement that goes up and down as kids come in and out. Uh, the 80,000 for health and wellness services is this money we get for providing health and wellness services to the Homestead School. That number is a little conservative, but not crazy conservative. So right now, based on last year's beds numbers, um, we might take in $94,000. I tell you this because we can be less conservative and budget higher, but then if those things don't come to fruition, you don't necessarily have the money. Mm -hmm. So I've budgeted at that. Um, Medicaid reimbursement, we haven't collected a dime yet, and so I don't really, I will be honest that I'm flying blind on that number. The uh, amount of money that they estimated we could get up to was $80,000. However, some of it is required that we have past prescriptions because you can bill back 15 months. I have no idea what I'm gonna collect and we just signed the contract with the company that's gonna collect. And as I know more, so if I know that it's gonna be much higher in March, I'll adjust that number up. Right now as a placeholder, I'm being conservative uh, and, and they also told us to be conservative because they said a lot of times you're not gonna collect your maximum amount because you need to get uh, signed consents from parents, you need to get prescriptions from the providers, and you're not always able to get all those things. So that's where I came up with the number. But I am kind of flying blind on that one. It's our first time doing that. I increased our interest in earnings to 125. I'm gonna let you know why I'm doing that. Last year, uh, this year, meaning, uh, I'm probably gonna make $240,000 on our interest in earnings. Right now, if I wanna lock up money for six months, they want to do it for high fours. That means that the market thinks that the interest rates six months from now are going to be in the high fours. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking at what I'm going to earn at the end of next year, and they're signaling three Fed rates, cuts. So I'm going to assume I'm not going to earn 5.28, that I'm going to probably earn closer to four, mm -hmm. which would be like 160, and then I lower it even more to be very conservative. Mm -hmm. um, 
again, refund of BOCES, that's money we get back from BOCES. BOCES doesn't get to keep a fund balance, they overcharge us. Whatever they've overcharged us, uh, they refund back to us the next year. Um, refund, I don't really touch the refund of prior year expenses and other unclassified because those are like donations and insurance claims and things that you don't know. I just keep them the same every year because they're so wildly unpredictable. Uh, unless I have somebody writing something like that time the compressor station came in and said they'd give us 30000 outright, mm -hmm. you know, that time I budgeted that, but otherwise I don't. Now, on the state aid basic formula, this is if she restores us. We're still going to get $400,000 less restored. Now, 300 of that is going to come out of the, um, a lower bond payment, but 100 of that is because we're continually losing our expense-based aid ratios. That's what, there's a form I gave you that just has little pieces of info in there, the aid ratios over the years. You'll see it's um, this one, which I'll, I'll also put on the website for people to see. And you'll see things like BOCES aid has gone from 21 and 22. I used to get 55% of every dollar I spent at BOCES. Now I get 42. And then I also put in there what I would have gotten in today's dollars in state aid revenue underneath there. And you'll see that like even this year, um, in 23-24, I'm only getting $30,000 more in state aid than I got in 21-22. And we just can't keep up anymore with the state not giving us anything. So even if she restores us, we're, we're going to suggest some cuts. Um, BOCES aid, those are all self-explanatory. They come right off the governor's run, um, and they're exactly what's in there. But so if you look in there, we're going to make only $20,000 more than next year, even after a $500,000 tax increase because of all the revenue we're losing from the state and from um, losing that pilot. So uh, it's a rough year revenue-wise. And it's not much more than, because the other thing I, I put in there, so on this other form you see the aid ratios and you see the actual aid. The next one down is our actual spending. Um, it's projected for this year and then for next year I just put 19 million 519 as a placeholder. Um, so we're not like going gangbusters. Right. We spent kind of around the same amount of money every year for the last three years and are going to have to make do with that again this year. Uh, unfortunately, everybody's salary and everybody in the medical and all that stuff continues to go up. <laughs> so um, that's why we're kind of in this situation is because state aid has kind of just dragged. And then the, the very bottom thing I put on that, just to compare to other schools, just to show that we're not doing something crazy. These are other schools around our size and the surrounding counties. Um, and basically the criteria I used was no more than 750 students and they have to operate two buildings. But when you're looking at that, you're looking at um, Livingston Manor's budget was 19,365 to our 19,005. There is one deposit in Delaware is 18,006, so they're a little lower than us. But then you go to Orange County and it's a lot higher than us. Mm. And they both just have two buildings. Uh, all three of them actually just have two buildings. Greenwoods is a little higher because they tuition out their um, high, school. high school, so they've got to pay for that. But um, so you see, you know, we're not like uh, charging so much that we're up with Orange County. Um, and I just kind of wanted to put that in there to be like, yeah, there are things that we can cut back on spending, but we're not like this lavish program right. by any means. <laughs> um, so that's that's on the revenue side. So now on the proposed budget, this has some of the fluff, and this original proposed, this is not going to be the real proposed budget, this is not what I'm giving to you in March, this is actually the purpose of this workshop. Um, you'll see that it is $577,000 more than what I'm going to make next year. I need to pare that down. Some of these things have fluff which I can move. Some of them don't and actually I can give over to Tracy to give some of the proposed cuts and you guys can, or ideas for cuts, they're not proposed yet in any way, shape or form. But there's really, and I don't want to, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there really isn't a way to do it without some kind of cuts. You'll notice on her sheet there is not a single teacher. Well, there is one teacher, but that's not a cut of a teacher. That is if a, retirement if a that teacher we... retirees, we won't replace them. Um, but otherwise, we tried to keep, um, and I don't want to cut into Tracy's side, the stuff on the right, so you'll see two levels of numbers mm -hmm. on Tracy's sheet. Um, the stuff on the right is stuff that we are not currently considering, but it is like in a worst case scenario on the table. It's not currently being discussed. It was just brought up. Um, and I don't, so Tracy, do you want to talk more about those or do you so want just to, to? Just to clarify, Caleb, yep. that the, 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 uh, the state cut is 600 and some thousand dollars, right? 
the state cut to foundation aid is 612. They right. want to cut another 100 grand from our expense base aids and then also not give us any raise on top of it while all my stuff is still, you know, I can't go and tell everybody else like, hey, state didn't give me more. So I'm with not the state cutting more. that and we're losing a pilot program, what's the total? Is that like $900,000? Yeah, all together. Like all, That's all what I'm saying, in, all yeah. together, what we're losing for, for this year between the pilot and the state cuts. If, if it goes that route, we're losing a little over 900 grand, correct? Yeah, if she restores our cuts, we're still going to lose 300 and something. About, no, even kind of about 500. So if you look, like look at our revenue. With the rest, that's with the restoration in there. I have mm -hmm. the same exact money I had last year. And that's after a $500,000 tax increase, which means that it's about 500 that I lost elsewhere. Because they've reduced our aid. Right. Yeah, well, and, and the pilot. And the pilot. And the pilot. And the the 120 some thousand dollar pilot, yes. So it's not just that, it's also the pilot. But then on the expense side, we have, we've had a number of things like, for instance, and, but this stuff adds up. Um, like $8,500 you'll see on BOCES services under district meeting. What district meeting is, is the Board of Education. But it's not the Board of Education. It's the Board of Education meeting where the public votes. And what they mean by district meeting is a meeting of the entire district. So right. that's like a meeting of everybody. That's the voting machine. And Orange County, so Sullivan County had already stopped giving out the voting machines. And right. Orange County told us because it conflicts with their primary, they won't do voting machines anymore. So we now have to pay for our own and they're not super cheap. Right. So that is 8,500 bucks. Um, you have your basic raises and you, I shifted some money around in there, but um, where else is a big area? The other thing, just to, before we go off of that first page, when it talks about contractual board of education, the $8,500, that includes like, um, if we decide to do that board retreat where that NISBA gentleman came in and worked with us, that costs money. If we decide to go, the entire board goes down to the NISBA conference, that will be significant. Um, so that's where that money is. Um, and again, last year, like the NISBA conference for us to go, if we all, and this is a conservative, this is just me doing quick math, if we all went to um, New York City for the NISBA conference, which is on, you know, hope, you know, that would be amazing, that would be awesome, everybody gets the professional development, but that would run us about 10 grand. So that might be on our wish list and not on our needs. Um, so, you know, that's why you've got contractual under Board of Ed, um, you know, then the voting machine, that's why it's 11-5. So I just, before we went any further, I just wanted that NISBA conference. Because mm -hmm. I know that's on our wishes, but. It was, it definitely was. And everybody gets to hear it firsthand, but I think somebody should go to it with what we're dealing with with these buses and yeah. stuff. We can, I still say that we still have to, you know, we still have to budget for at least two members going. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, two members and then myself, um, just to make sure we hear everything. Mm -hmm. It is um, very important, you know, I would like to say, yes, let's all do a field trip. Yep. Sorry, Kato, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I can go down through each thing and just show you where the big ticket items are that kind of changed, and then also explain some of the more vague ones. Like, for instance, um, Lisa, I just reallocated how I have her salary allocated. I'm not planning, no offense, Lisa, we're not planning on giving a 30 plus thousand dollar raise to her or anything. It's, um, so when you see the district clerk go 41 to 48, um, her salary, because Lisa does business office stuff, she does public information stuff, I just changed the percentages and did 40, 40 instead of 35, 35, because I feel more of Well, it's more transparent, because she is, she gets paid through a lot of different pools. Yeah, so, so I moved her across those different things. So you'll also see, like, the, the business office line went up. I put some of her salary on the business office line, which I wasn't doing before. I'm not giving Sarah a $30,000 raise, but there's no names. Right. on there so it, you know someone who's going to look on it in the public so I want to say that publicly they're going to look and be like who's getting going from 70 to 101 <laughs> and and that's not um what's happening um so if you go down to so those are all pretty basic where's a big I know so, two big ones okay on the operations of plant okay so let's go to operations and plant 
So which particular one on that? Well, there's a, an over $10,000 increase on salaries for substitutes. Yes. So, but you'll also see a 30,000 decrease on cleaners in the high school. So right. one thing that I have the intent of doing is going back to what we had pre-COVID, which um, will, if somebody who has claimed they're going to retire retires, you can kind of move it around mm -hmm. and then I'd have fewer cleaners. But that would mean that uh, currently I'm carrying basically a part-time cleaner who covers people when they leave. I'm not going to have that position anymore. I will have that position, but they're going to be a regular cleaner. So now when somebody's out, I might actually have to call in a okay. sub for them, but I'll have lower salaries. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm planning to do is, is when uh, he retires, I'll move one of our existing maintenance up and then shuffle all of my cleaners around. But at the end, instead of having three cleaners at night in the elementary and three cleaners over at the high school, I'm gonna have two at night at the elementary and three at the high school. But that means when one of them's out, right. gonna have to pull I'm gonna have to cover them. So I decreased one, increased the other, and I'm also going to remove somebody from the high school into the elementary school. So combined, those three are, I think, slightly less than they were actually even last year because I'm anticipating a new hire not getting paid quite as much as okay. one of the people who's going. Then we have a $45,000 increase for contractual under that same heading. Yes, that's because of an error in the, well, it's not an error, but I've decided to keep it for consistency. So if you go to the next one, maintenance of plant, you're gonna see contractual went down 15, and building repairs went down 10, and supplies went down 20. Okay. And the reason why is, and in particular, it's two contracts that we're talking about. To my mind, but this has been going on since probably shortly after William Thornton. But to my mind, the train contract and the Siemens contract are maintenance contracts, and that's where I've been budgeting them. But, and this isn't just Sarah, this was also BOCES before her. They've been, whenever they get them, they've been coding them to okay. operations. And so I'm going to keep them in operations, even though I still think they're maintenance, because otherwise it makes it difficult to compare what you spend year to year. Right. But those contracts are tr train right now, and we're working on negotiating that lower. That's actually one of these, but it doesn't have an amount in there. We think we have like the Cadillac maintenance plan with train because Siemens charges us $18,000 for our HVAC maintenance over at the uh, elementary. elementary. And that's like system upgrades and that kind of stuff. And when they come in and check it every once in a while. Train is charging us $29,000 for the high schools. But my understanding is um, from talking to Mike Skokos, he said they come in and they do the, like change the filters for you here. Over there, Jimmy changes the filters. He's like, right. are we paying extra to have, he's like, Cause we don't necessarily need that. That's like right. another level of service. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to negotiate with them based on Siemens contract and say, how can you get me closer? What are you guys charging me that uh, right. these guys aren't? And try to get that down a little bit. Yeah, if but there's those, stuff that we can do in-house. Yes, yeah. those two contracts together are 47,000 and they are originally budgeted and maintenance contractual but have been getting posted. To operations. In operations and operations is only 35 budgeted. So just those two alone. Put throws it, over, it up yeah. over there. And then the other maintenance contracts that are going into operations, um, which probably do belong in there, are our fire and burglar alarm um, monitoring. And they run about 14,000 a year. That's uh, previously it was Stanley Security. They changed their name to Securitas. It's uh, about a thousand and change dollars a month. Um, so those Combine, come up to 50, and then the other 30 is, um, so contractuals, whatever you have, like if Ross Electric comes in, it's, mm -hmm. it's any kind of a contractor that comes in, period. Mm -hmm. um, so I just kind of shifted them a little bit. Okay. So you'll see the, the total budget for operations went up, what was it, not even quite 40, it went up 38. But then when you go to maintenance, it went down right. 43. So I've actually been able to keep that kind of flat, because we're gonna buy a little less equipment. Fuel costs have been stable, luckily. Um, and hopefully fuel costs go down a little bit. I didn't lower them on this estimate because I want to wait and see what kind of um, fuel efficiency we see with these upgrades, but I, I might be able to lower the fuel if I can see a good, a good efficiency there. But like when you go to fuel here too, that's another thing. Um, typically we've come way under the 75, so I was looking at lowering that in the budget, and that was a, like an area where I had a little bit of fluff built, but not anymore because we have to add that additive which is right. frustrating. 
but it adds $2,000 per fill up and we fill up three times. So gotcha. this year I'm gonna hit 71, whereas without that additive I would have only paid 65 or so. Okay. Um, electric, spot on. Last year we spent 44,000, I budgeted 45. Again, electric costs have been pretty stable, especially in NYSEG. Um, not low, but stable. Right. <laughs> um, and let's see, what were the other areas? We saved a ton in telephone. Yep. Um, Jed helped out with that. He negotiated a new, con and, and three might be high. I actually think we canceled all of them and it's gonna be zero, but just in case there's one that I missed in there and I get a bill for like 50 bucks somewhere that I didn't know was gonna happen, I left it at three. But Jed went through and removed all of our POTS lines, pots lines and renegotiated, well not, didn't completely remove them, he removed some of them and the ones that we kept he renegotiated with a new company that we're also purchasing through BOCI so we'll get eight on it because it goes on the telecommunications coaster. So our $14,000 bill is gonna go down to 6,000 and then we're also gonna get 44% of that money back at eight. And it wasn't just in both buildings, it's also so that in is also at transportation as well. And transportation I did lower it to zero because they only have a couple phones so I'm not worried about a, an errant phone line but here in this building there's so many phones that if we just happen to miss one and I get a bill anyway, and just and once I see that none of them are, are coming in, I'll eventually drop it to zero. But where are you now, Caleb? Um, so central printing, we're keeping the same. We're done with maintenance of plant. I just mentioned transportation because that was included with the funds. Okay. So which one, I'm sorry? Mm. Oh, okay. no, no, the, the, you know what that is? No, that's the, the lease. So the 5,000 lease purchases is the cost of those um, postage machines and the Pitney Bowes stuff. And then the 5,000 itself is the, is the postage meters that we put on there. And it also covers the um, printing permit. So whenever you add like that, that's what that goes. But we always come, we always come actually under that number. That's why it's been 10,000 actually for the last like six years because I'm still coming in at like seven and eight. Once it gets closer to 10, I'll up it some, but I don't think I need to. Also on the salaries maintenance, that should have gone up a little bit, but the proposal is to make it down. So that should have gone up 3% and that's not in there. I don't know why that's not up 3%, which is, so it should be about 8,000 higher. But one of the proposals is not to replace one of those maintenance people, so that would crash back down. But that, I just realizing that that is a mistake in there. I don't know why that's still 215. I'm wondering if my formula, if I was a, no, if I did a bonehead mood and typed over a formula, you know, mm -hmm. if you use an Excel, sometimes you do that in accident. So I put mm -hmm. it, I put it in the place that it takes the info from, but I, I got right. rid of the formula, so it didn't. So that 215 should be, should have been increased by 3%? Yeah, yeah, because the, see, all of them are on the top step, mm -hmm. and the CSCA contract has a 3% increase in it this year. So it would have been six, 6,300, 6,450. Six, so it would have been 6,450 higher. Um, I actually think we're gonna come under the 98,000 in insurance, but I put 100,000 in there anyway. They're increasing our insurance by a small amount, but we also stopped using Marshall Sterling, which is gonna offset that. So I'll take a closer look at that again. We might even just leave that at 98. Um, Nicer's not really raising our rates very much and we stopped using the one agent the which was charging us like 3,000. So that offsets any increase we had. Um, school association dues, I am waiting to see if we're gonna get a bill for Tri-State. I have not gotten one yet. I know we were uh, an emeritus member at one point. And ex so they, officio. Ex officio. Uh, yeah, emeritus is what, after, after. you retire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, I've never gotten a bill from them, and I don't know if they're billing us through BOCES or what, because that wasn't my um, my area, but I'm assuming I'm gonna get a bill, because I remember them saying it would be 7,000 and change. Um, otherwise, our association dues it's $7,000 to be part of NISBA. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 1,200 to be part of the Rural Schools Association. Uh, we get a grant from them also for like 20 and change thousand um, dollars. It's four, no, it's another 1,200 to be part of the Mid-Hudson School Study Council. And then the other two were memberships of, three were memberships of is NISMA, that's the closer, that's 600 bucks. Um, we have to be a member of that so they can do all county and yeah. all that kind of stuff. 
Asbo. Um, Asbo, that's the business officials one, but that's like 300 and change dollars. And then I actually think school, Sullivan yeah. County School Board Association is like 600 bucks or something. Um, it's, it's not massive. The three big ones are we're, we're NISBA. Um, and Tri-States. Well, Tri-States is the big one and once I get a bill. And again, I'll adjust this for the actual once more information comes in, because you're getting like, for instance, I don't have our workers comp yet. I don't have, there's a number of things that haven't come in yet. So right. these are like, I think. They just had to increase that, right, Lisa? The membership fees for the Sullivan County School Board Association? Yeah, just per pupil. So right. It actually, when you look at it, it really kind of leveraged out because our enrollment is as high as it was a year or two, three, four years ago. Right. So it's pretty much around, I want to say $500 mark, but I think even 500 is high. Okay. I can't remember off the top of my head. For I, I remember board. they had to change things. Because they were losing money too. The refund of real property taxes, if anybody ever wondered what that is, that is exclusively for those like scar decisions. Mm -hmm. So when somebody uh, contests their assessment and it happens after they've already paid taxes, I have to pay right. them back, but it's not a refund of like an overpayment. It's right. It's refund that I, you know, we just lose out on it. Is there so, a grievance day? Um, yeah, but they take a long time now, and there's a company, actually this year we had quite a few of them, and they just came in on the last board meeting, I'm just paying them out, um, Aventi Properties yeah. is like hard on it right now, so we got more than we were typically used to, not that the number ended up being massive or anything, but um, they did like 12 properties, which is more than I've had in any other year. Right, it's just the number of instances were higher. Right, um, some of them they completely lost, that they came back, but some of them they, they got decent amount so I think we ended up paying seven or eight thousand dollars that's what by the way Kristen when you had asked the one time what all those were that was when the scar decisions come down from the court that's um, that's out of our control yeah yeah but we put it you have to as a formality put it on the board it's not like you really have the authority to right. say no or you could they'd sue you but <laughs> um, the next one is uh, that grant ran out and Scott Krebs is on our books now that's the um, Director of Instructional Supports, that position was originally being covered 100% by a grant. Um, that was the ARP grant. Right. Um, supervision, that one's actually not going up very much. Six, that's business as usual. That's principals, two secretaries in each building. And um, then the contractual is any tuition reimbursement, mileage, or professional development that goes into them, or really any kind of thing that they get for their office. Um, same thing, supplies are self-explanatory, I don't need to go into that. People know what pens and pencils are <laughs> and stuff like that. Not that $2,000 is pens and pencils, it can also be like file cabinets and stuff. Um, teaching regular school, so this one's got some explaining to do because I'm trying to get much more transparent. So um, contractual is this big old hodgepodge and I've tried to break that out. Also, we used to have salaries non-instructional and that had like everybody who wasn't a teacher under the sun and none of it was broken out in any kind of a way. So I've started breaking them out. Um, and some of these things are just because of classification. So like when you look at cap salaries seven through 12 going up, one is because we lost the grant, the, not the ARP one, we lost the targeted school improvement grant. We were paying for one of the teacher's assistants on that. That teaching assistant is now going in there. The other thing happened when Tom Vorstadt retired, we moved a teacher who was a special education teacher into science. So they moved into that budget line from the special ed budget line. And that's why that went up more than you might have expected. It's not raises, it's, it's got a teacher and a teaching assistant more than it had um, the prior year. Uh, last year, I budgeted it as if Tom Vorstadt was retiring and we just weren't replacing him. I didn't realize we were moving a special ed teacher. But really, that just moves it from uh, a line that we'll go on to next into this line. Um, college classes, $35,000. It goes from twelve five to thirty five. dollars That, again, with the ending of the COVID grants, that's the cost of the stipends to teachers to teach college courses. We offered 17 last year. 12,500 of that is covered by a grant called Title IV. Um, the rest of it was previously covered by ARP and is now being covered by the district. Uh, I don't know that 17 courses are being 
offered yet. Mike is still in the process of doing the schedule. When he gets the actual schedule done, I'll sit down with him and I'll update that number to be to reflect how many college courses we're actually offering. And I think by um, telling the parents that the 100% of the cost of the colleges will be back on them, mm -hmm. um, then we will most likely see a drop mm -hmm. in yeah. the number of courses offered. Uh, because this year we did see a lot of kids, or the past couple of years, a lot more kids take advantage of it. And I don't blame them, right. but we probably will see a drop in the number of classes. Um, substitute teachers, last year we had 70. This year I'm putting 77. That is because we are on pace to pay 75 this year. That is just the current pace. That doesn't mean that that's what we're going to land at. That's me taking the uh, number of days so far, dividing it, and uh, projecting it out based on that. So we had X amount of school days. We paid this much in subs. I divided it by that and said we have this many more. So if people miss at the same rate, that's what I'm going to pay. So I'm budgeting 77 because of that. Homeschool liaison, that is Anthony. He was, that was the other person that we were paying on that TSI grant. We paid for Christine Newfield, Anthony, and then for several of our PD. So Joan Miller in particular and Sue Wheeler, they were both paid off of that grant. We're not, uh, Sue Wheeler is not um, currently doing any work for us, but Joan Miller is. But now um, we're running it through BOCES. But now we're running it through BOCES. But, she's, but that's why the BOCES, when I get down to that, that's why that's higher, because some of the things that were going through the grant are now going to be going through BOCES. Um, monitors, we have one monitor in the junior senior high school. Teachers aides, we have two in GRM. Monitors and GRM, those are the cafeteria monitors. Equipment, we can probably lower that. I have to sit and discuss and see if there's anything going through there. Um, there are years where I put zero there. I mean, there's no equipment that I'm aware of that we need to purchase. So that's an area. We definitely that, can drop it by half. Yeah. Um, I just always put 15 as a placeholder, like, you know, in case somebody asks to get something. But um, contractual 10 grand right now, that's actually just like discretionary money for the principals to determine that can go towards whatever they need in education. Um, professional development, that's, we have strong professional development, like over $100,000 of professional development in BOCI services right now as part of that 363. The 65 is the discretionary and it covers about 26 personnel and the, um, a couple of the administrators and that's the money that, um, and we're working hard now to, to break these out so that I can give to the principals and keep much closer control on it as well though too. So I can go to my Conklin and say, here you have $6,500. Once you've approved $6,500 worth, you're done, and every single one after that is going to get denied. So if you use it all in a month, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we do have a ton of professional development planned, but that's the plan one. The $6,500 is the discretionary. I had software in there. You'll see that it's zero. Last year, it was 25. We buy all of it through BOCES. That's another reason why the BOCES went up from 270 to 363. 50 grand of that is just software. Um, which we're reviewing to see what we need to keep buying and not buy. The 77.8 for the SROs, we could, if I could be convinced that uh, it would happen, lower each of those by five grand. That's overtime, but then we need to control and make sure that overtime isn't happening too much, right? And that's, these are based off of actual bills. So last year we paid close to 150. Do you get an overtime here? They do get overtime, yeah. If we ask them to stay for certain events like homecoming, like we feel like there needs to be security, we do have to pay overtime. Now, if they are working, um, like our Deputy Grady um, stays in the office downstairs, if he's working for um, the town, then the town gets charged that overtime. We don't. And Sarah goes through the bills, and like she's disputed and won a few of them. Um, Grady's really good at marking what he was doing. So when they send us a bill, she goes down to make sure that it is related to the school. And she has refuted and gotten back if it's not, where she said, no, look, he's working for the town that day. Is Anthony at all our, Anthony's at all our events, isn't he? He is at almost all of them, yeah. yeah. Isn't he licensed to carry? Yes. He is. Why aren't we utilizing that? We can. We can? I can. I've, I can That's a great idea. Um, I know he's at every basketball game I'm at. I'm at a lot of them. I know he walks around up there at the football field. He can. I know he can't be at every event. No, but he can. The SRO officer be at every event. There's a ball game down here and a ball game up here. No, he or, um, and I've talked to, to him care. about it, and 
he is comfort you know he just basically wants the board to say please or not please but you know to put it so he's it's willing not to just, do it he, he's he says willing he to do is. it he's willing to do it i don't even have a problem if he carries during the day you got a, you got an sr officer at that end of the building something goes down up here and he's up here he can't do nothing until he gets here yeah he's allowed i think yeah i think his only reticence to carry it during the day is um that's it reticence is his relationship with the kids and his position with the kids i think that's his only reticence at basketball games football games at after school i don't think it phases him if that's just a conversation Jeremy's i had boot. i don't I'm even sure. know he's got it on so um but i'll tell you know i'll broach that topic again but definitely the we can get rid of the, the, the is so does the uh public schools who else does pre-k what do you mean all the other schools all the other schools do do pre-k oh yeah, yeah they all do them yeah. yes because we brought that back here about what five years ago we, well, we, we didn't get rid of it. What ended up happening was, I got us a second grant, actually. So we had a $62,000 grant, so we cut down to one class, right? <laughs> then I got us a second grant that would allow us to have two, but then our enrollment dropped to 15 last year. Right. And they do it per pupil, right? Right. So if we have, supposedly we'll have 26, possibly. If we have 26, our grant will go, we'll save money on this. Oh, if, if we have 26, we'll get another um, $60,000. Okay. We were going to cut pre-K cuts back when. Yeah, if you yeah, completely yeah. cut pre-K, you'd keep, save money, but you don't, if you... I don't think that's a good idea. No, I don't either. No, and, but otherwise, it doesn't make sense to cut anything else. And, you know, and the other thing the is, even, like, this year, we had one pre-K class, so we used one of the pre-K teachers to cover the third grade class. Right. Next year, that's if we it, have, um, let's say, that pre-K class that we have now, 15, if that stays the same, and that kindergarten class is still warrants one, um, kindergarten class and that one kindergarten class will take the other kindergarten teacher she could be an early interventionist she could be at an upper grades intervention we can use them in so many ways because again we are still trying to cover up from COVID learning loss okay I just you know other schools did it yeah. Monticello um, actually they do theirs through like daycare centers they don't have it in their that's buildings that's us paying the tuition to uh, Sullivan County Community College now yeah, so, well, so I'm going to go down. The, the PBIS right now, we, we had started this during COVID where we give 5000 to each of the PBISs so they don't have to fundraise, fundraise or, or it can be a supplement to their fundraise. It's up to you guys how much you want to do, less, more, whatever. Um, SRO, professional services, PBIS. This, the first tuition, contractual tuition, is tuition reimbursement to teachers. Last year it was only $4,000. I actually have, but we have more younger more younger teachers, that's not good grammar. Anyway, we have a younger staff. So um, as far as I know right now, that 10,000 is still a good number. Um, I'm gonna send an email out. They have to tell me before the end of March how many credits they're gonna take next year because otherwise I won't be able to budget for it and it is in the contract. Right now I just have one teacher who said they're taking credits and I think it's 12. So my guess is tuition reimbursement on 12 of them, it's for a regular master's, is gonna be like 7,800. So that 10 is, is probably a good number. I wouldn't change it. Contractual mileage. I just upped it a little because it looks like we're going to be about three thousand. When do you use that? Who, who uses that? The tuition reimbursement. No, no, no mileage. Mileage. Um, well, we're going to try to cut down on that big time, but uh, a ton of people use it. That's like okay. So, for instance, the um, we have a TA that does the library. The library. So that's um, back and forth to McKenzie. Back and forth to McKenzie. Um, our speech therapist. She travels to Homestead, she travels here, she, and that's again um, reimbursement. Um, we talked about today, uh, making sure starting in June is that yeah. we have, if we can't have a van at each location. Yeah. And we're you gonna, can use your own try car. To eliminate that. Gonna, we do have transportation right. available for you. You can use your own car. Because I know Anthony runs around to people's houses a lot, right? Yeah. Yes, and he does well, the van. The bigger one, the one that got us talking about it is, and not that the person did any wrong, so I won't say any names, but um, we did, uh, so now that we're doing Tri-State, some of the visits are down to like Rye. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I get a, a, and Tracy gets to hear me because I come down every time I see something that I think is like crazy. And, and I go, what is this? And, and so I got one that was like 200 and change dollars because it was from here to Rye, and, or from their house to Rye and back. And I was like, what is this? So we started talking about it and we were like, well, if we have a van at each thing, we can say, look, you can take the van, 
Or you can take your own car, you're not gonna get mileage for it, but you can take the van if you don't wanna use your own mileage, and then that cuts out. Now, I don't wanna make it sound like there's tons of those because we're still gonna keep, we're pretty much on par where we normally are. We normally hit right around $2,000 to $2,500 in mileage paid a year total, and we're gonna hit close to three, so it is up higher because of that, mm -hmm. but it's not like, it's not like 10 or five or something crazy. But um, that got the discussion starting where we're like, okay, well, there's gotta be a better way. <laughs> right, and we actually did try it. We, with the um, countywide conference day that was taking place yep. at Sullivan West, we, we did, did a bus. bus. And if you, you could take our bus, our lovely bus, to Sullivan West, or you can take your own car. So there was zero right. mileage reimbursements. Yeah, because when you're sending them, because we were sending like 20 people, so I was like, well, I can pay a bus driver, right. 48 there, 48 back, 96 bucks, and then save mileage for 20 people. You know, and if they want to drive, they can drive. I don't yep. mind one way or another. But so, so yeah, we're working on lowering that number now because um, we do have the vans and we have them available. Um, tuition, New York State Public School, that is, so normally that 5,000 is for things like um, four wins or like if a kid goes to a different public school for like a, a minor program. But now that is actually Sullivan County Community College. And I actually don't know that that's where that belongs, I'll be honest, there might be a special line for colleges, um, which I'll look for. But uh, previously we were paying the tuition again through a grant. So the tuition will be 35,000 and um, again, there's a corresponding revenue, so it's net zero, but you have to book the expenditure if we're paying them directly and we're getting reimbursed by the parents. Mm -hmm. So that's why that went up. Textbooks I don't think are gonna be any more than they were before. Supplies aren't gonna be any more than they were before. The BOCI services, what is in that 363 is, school tool is really expensive. That's like, uh, what was it, $40,000 for school tool. Very expensive. There's $110,000 right now for, um, actually 125 for professional development. That is Joan Miller, Linda Zachmary, uh, the Leader in Me program, and then $5,000 per conference for whoever they want to come in. So there's sometimes there's a science person. So that's why, you know, don't look and see the 6,500. We spend plenty of money on professional development. It's just all out of there. So that I can get some of the aid back because I get 44% back on that, um, which may increase my BOCES aid. So their BOCES aid doesn't have that kind of built into there. That also has in there um, all of the online courses that are taken. So when a student takes an online course, that goes through there. iTutor is in there. Um, alternative Ed is in there. That can be one of the pricier ones. Um, we only have one student in Alternative Ed right now. Uh, actually, they, we don't right now, but we had a seat for it. Yes. Um, and then we have a seat for the GED program. So the GED program is right around 16000 and the alternative ed is like $49,000. Um, I'm going to have to get, I actually had a list of all of these that I didn't bring with me, so I'll get more because there's more in that. There's a ton of stuff in that. But those were the big ones because I got the 125, the 40, 50, 16. So that's like 200 and change thousand of it right there. Okay. Um, and then all of our programs, so like the Raptor system, um, I think that's most of what is covered in that, but I will get you guys for our next meeting a very detailed list of that one because that's a big ticket item, so you're gonna wanna see what makes up that 363,000. Uh, students with disabilities, we had a couple things here, so we're only gonna spend 17,000 more than last year. That's mostly because we are having fewer students out of district. Um, so when you look at, and there's funky things that go on here, again, because this is a year where all these grants are dropping off, you see um, grants are accounted for in their own separate area. So some stuff got added and taken away. So you go to seven through 12. Seven through 12, that 212 is three teachers minus, but one of the teachers became a science teacher. So she came out. So all of the raises plus a reduction in one of our grants, but minus a teacher, came to the 212, if that makes any sense. So I took an $80,000 salary out, but they reduced our 611 grant by 30, so that added 30 back in. <laughs> and then you had the raises go back in. So it, it came out less, but it's not really less. That's the money that's up in that um, regular ad, seven through 12. Then on the second one, K through six, if you remember when we did the standalone course, we did it after we adopted the budget. So that is Adriana, uh, oh, I'm sorry, no names. Uh, that's our um, special ed teacher. 
and um, the teaching assistant that we moved over to there. They were not part of the original budget, but in exchange, we had students come back from out of district. So to give you an idea of like how, the, if you're wondering how that affects this year, because it obviously wasn't in last year's, but this year's budget. Um, yes, we're gonna spend a heck of a lot more on salaries K through six this year than what we budgeted, but we're also going to spend a heck of a lot less on tuition to other schools and BOCES. So for instance, now I'm gonna go back to last year, so 23, 24. You see that I budgeted 460 for tuition other schools. This year, actual number is gonna be 340. So it's gonna be 120 less than that. And the BOCES services at 1 million one, this year's actual number is gonna be 871,000. So we're gonna spend, you know, uh, 230,000 under that budget. And so $360,000 under budget from sending kids out. And that's gonna way more than make up for the extra teachers that weren't budgeted for and probably make up in a couple other areas, which is nice. Um, and that was possible because of that class. We were able to take a couple students back from a BOCES program because of that. So that's gonna save us a ton. And that's allowed me to drop it next year, even after expecting about a 5% raise from BOCES, I'm budgeting less for next year. Now in there is some fluff. It's some fluff that I would highly recommend that you don't have me get rid of. I know it's gonna be tempting, you're gonna say, well, if we lower this, then we don't have to make the cuts, but um, special ed is super unpredictable. Yeah. If we so, have a family move in, we could. Right, so you'll see that I budgeted in tuition other schools 400,000 for this coming year. And I only spent 330 last year, so that's an extra 70. That's one, that's not even actually quite one kid. So if you brought it down to the real number, that would mean I couldn't have a kid move. If a kid moves in, right. my budget's shot. Um, same thing with BOCI services. <laughs> even though I'm only spending 870 this year, and I'm budgeting 130 over that, that's a key. So basically I budgeted, so that we're safe for up to two students coming in and getting classified and sent out of district. So I would, I could give up a little of the fluff, but not very much. I don't think we should do that when no. it comes to special I think I, I agree, because it's just so unpredictable. You don't know where you're gonna be. Nope. Um, but, I, you know, but I also don't wanna lie. That's, you know, that's what's in there. I, I also can probably move some of those aids down. So you'll see it went from 112.5 to 150. Um, I budget the aids, and we already lowered it a little bit. I budget aides as if they're going to show up every single day, not miss a single day, and cash out every day they're entitled to for the maximum amount. That never happens. I think, I don't even think I have, I maybe have one. But I mean, that means that you can't miss a single day in the school year period. So the, we've already pared it down originally. It was 175 I had budgeted there. Uh, we're just kind of discussing where we're comfortable with because there's no way to know where that's gonna land. Right. Um, Almost certainly it will be lower than that. I can tell you that this year we're, we're like, it looks like we're gonna land right in the 112, 130, like right on budget. So that's a discussion. Uh, OT services, there's really not any room to move. So that's, um, right now we use Cheryl LaBella. Um, and then the 35 is PT services. We use a, a company. I don't know where we're at for this year because they always send their bill at the very end of the year. Last year we came in at 29. I don't have my bill for this year yet. But because we came at 29 last year and I'm expecting something similar this year, I feel comfortable putting 35. Um, 19, <coughs> sorry. Next three haven't moved, really. 19, yeah. two, that's for all of the other professionals. None of them are big tickets on their own. So like we have a teacher for the visually impaired that comes in and does uh, an assessment, but that's a few thousand dollars. Then we have a, a gentleman named Dr. or I don't know if it's a woman or a man actually, it says Dr. Johnson, I shouldn't assume. I didn't see the first name. Um, their last name's Johnson. And um, so they do a few thousand dollars. So they're just, um, it's kind of a hodgepodge of anybody who I didn't want to break out because. They're all lumped together. Yeah, because individually none of them are, are significant enough to, to list. Um, materials and supplies, normal. So this should be the last year this happens. But Votech, we are billed in a very strange way. You heard me whine about it last year. Yes. And um, so what happens is, and it's stabilized now, but they use the last two years and they take the average of the last two years and bill you for that. We had one year where we had extraordinarily high enrollment. And the year before that we had very low enrollment because of COVID. So it was 15 students, then it was 41. So last year I got billed for, uh, so what would that be, 56? I got billed for 28 kids. This year we have 26. 
So next year, I'm going to get billed for 67 divided by 2. I'm going to get billed for 33.5 kids. So I'm going to get billed for another five and a half kids at 16 grand. So I upped it by another, like, you know, 70 grand for right now. Are they changing that formulary? No, okay. no, no. And you know what? That's uh, entirely on us business officials. Long before I came, <laughs> but apparently we're a type. And what we were doing was, so because we're usually responsible for doing the initial service requests, and we were all grossly underestimating the number of kids that were going there because we know that the BOCES formula is that they bill you for it and then give you the money back, and we didn't want them to bill it for us up front. Right. So they said, we're going to take away your incentive to underestimate it because you keep sending way more kids than you said you were going to, and we don't have the staff for it. Right. That's what I've been told anyway. It happened makes before sense. I got here, but I said, that makes sense because it's something I would do. <laughs> Um, but that should go down by over $100,000 next year because we have 26 this year and if we have 26 next year then it'll level out and I'll start getting billed for that normal amount. But it takes a little time for that to drop off so it's another ouch next year. School libraries more or less the same, those are just inflationary bumps. Um, computer assisted instruction. I did not, so we had that part-time employee, we hired them very shortly after we adopted the budget. So they weren't in the original budget. So that's why it's a big swing. Um, guidance just happens to be a year where they're getting larger raises than typical. So there are points in the teacher's contract where if they hit, um, especially in certain longevity ones, like mm -hmm. I think step 24, that those just happen to be big, big hit years. Oh, who's this one? So now we're on health services. That one's just inflationary, going up by five. Psychologist services. I budgeted in there because we have, but I'm, we're working on not having that. We've had a backlog of evaluations. And so the past five years, we've pretty consistently paid between six and $8,000 in overtime between our two psychologists. Bethany has actually um, been working with them, has already gotten that under control. But I put it in there because I'm skeptical and I told Bethany, I said, I'm not taking it out until I see it. Um, so I bumped it up because I hadn't traditionally been budgeting for it and I just kept seeing it. I'm being told that that won't really happen on the same level as it was happening before. Um, so whatever they're doing, they've worked their schedules around to where that's not necessary, but um, that's why it's going up by that much. Uh, and I'm probably going to take that out after we discuss more, but I just wanted to feel comfortable enough to do that. Co-curricular activities, we've got to work on. I really got to break that out for you guys better. That is, some of those things really aren't even co-curricular activities. Uh, and again, this is, predates me, but I haven't done anything to fix it either. We put in coordinators go in there, clubs go in there, any non-coaching extracurricular goes in there, so like Odyssey of the Mind, things like that. Um, the state requires that we have a teacher of record for any online course, and we've been doing a lot more online courses. We're gonna work on limiting those next year, but for, again, this budget I'm presenting to you is the worst case. This is like, we're going gangbusters, I'm throwing everything in, nothing's changing, and we're gonna keep offering everything exactly the way we're doing, and we're gonna do nothing to rein it in. So just to let you know, that number's probably going to go down also. That has like, we're gonna give classes, but Tracy has actually already talked to them and said, kind of given them parameters about when you can offer an online course. So that number will definitely get reduced. Um, but I will break it up into four things for you guys. What do we pay for clubs? What do we pay for teacher of record? What do we pay for coordinators? And then the fourth one is gonna be the all other, and I suspect that the all other will be uh, a small portion of it. Because I do believe coordinators are about 24,000. Teacher of record is just shy of 20. And clubs, because we're doing like 40 clubs now, they're right in the 20 to 25 range, which is gonna leave you know like 16 or 20 left. Also sometimes, and this is something that I can work out with um, my payroll department, and I just haven't gotten into it yet, sometimes the college courses accidentally get coded in there because they're a stipend. Um, so I'll break that all out for the March meeting. But that's what goes in there, and I know that's very nondescript. Really, the only thing that should go into there is extracurricular. So it should just be clubs and um, if there's like Odyssey of the Mind or something like that. And the other stuff should probably go back up into regular instruction, like 
a teacher of record is, I can give you an example, one of our teachers, our social studies teacher, the kid takes online global, uh, needs it to graduate. Basically what we do is we pay them to every week contact the kid, contact the parent, say this is where the, he's at, he's not doing this, please check in, does he need any help? Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. Um, and that really doesn't, it's not a co-curricular activity. <laughs> Um, so that's that one. Interscholastic athletics, I still need to sit down with Amanda, so all I've done on that one is move it over and increase based on what the contract says. So there's no change. Oh, there is one change. I added 9,000 into BOCES services because Huddle was being um, posted in the computer assisted instruction for some reason. And that's sports. Yep. And then finally, last page, well, no, second to last page, pupil transportation. I'm actually keeping pupil transportation down where I'm not planning to buy any equipment. Um, I think fuel costs are going to be stable, so are parts, lubricant, all that. The contractual will stay more or less the same. Um, and I'm looking to reduce um, monitor expenses. Also, I'm not going quite as heavy handed on budgeting the monitors. I budgeted the monitors the same way as I do the aids. It's where a little bit of fluff goes in, and that assumes that they're not going to miss a single day. They're going to cash out all their days. So I'm not going quite as heavy handed on that. So that's where the savings for that went. Um, and then hopefully, and we'll get something back from Melissa sometime in the next month or two, I'm, I'm fingers crossed that we can do five runs, that it comes back with some kind of reasonable. I told her to have it ready for the March meeting. Yeah. So hopefully it, it's a reasonable, you know, it's not like an extra 20 minutes on the bus or something, you know what I mean? Um, garage building, it's going to be the same. That comes in close every year. We haven't gone over it in a year, uh, and I don't think I'm going to be paying the telephone anymore. Um, employee benefits, nicers, ouch, ERS. ERS went up 22%. Yaucheroo. Um, it's not going to look like 22%, but it went from I pay 9%. Yeah, but these, these are out of our control. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they We are. have nothing to do with Well, but I'm just letting you know where I'm I came saying, up with the number. These, yeah. ha these have nothing to do with we have Yeah, we can pass this. that. Yeah. But that's, yeah, we I got nothing no to do with that. Stuff. Same thing with debt service. That went down 300. We don't have any control over that. The bus lease principle is going to be the same. The transfer into the two different things are going to be the same. And so right now that comes to 20 million 107. We don't want to spend 20 million 107. We're going to work on bringing that down. But last year was 19 million 509, so that's an extra 600, which is a little bit less. No, it's right around 3%. So that's that's not crazy. Going up to 12 million one is only increasing your expenses 3%. We're going to bring that down, but um, Tracy will discuss like some of the ideas for for cuts. But that's yeah, what we're working on. With the sheet that I gave you, if with and there's some things that. Um, I moved over to the side, to the right-hand side, just, you know, saying that if to keep it on the plate but not planning on it. So that's like coordinators and things like that. But, again, if we make sure parents pay for SUNY Sullivan, because um, that's no longer paid for a grant, that's a cost savings of $25,000. Um, if we do have a retirement for a teacher, if we have a maintenance retiree and we don't they go to attrition, we just don't rehire. Those are the savings there. Um, curriculum writing and PD, that's summer work. So we are um, gonna limit that. So there's a cost savings there. So I pretty much broke it down into um, areas that we could cut. Like, you know, again, we're looking at um, the need for part-time employees in certain areas. You know, like the homework club, we run it four days a week. We're looking at just Tuesdays and Thursdays. The fitness club, instead of running it four days a week, just Tuesdays and Thursdays. And right there, that's a savings of $6,800. It's those little pieces that can add up. Um, you know, again, looking at, you know, equipment. I put, like, he got rid of the phone, so I had just put $7,000. It's going to end up, Jed did a great job. It's going to be more than that. Um, you know, equipment, and we, and Caleb's been finagling that with me of going down through there. Um, you know, I did put on there about, um, you know, the possibility and I want both buildings to have SROs, but if we do have, you know, to make a decision, then, you know, I know that um, Lumberland, the constable, I can't, yes, he's, you know, he comes over there, so I don't, you know, but I didn't put, I did put that to the far right, so that's not included in my cuts. That's a non-starter for me. I think we need SROs. Oh, and I, and, and that's why I moved it over to the right. 
Um, What's summer school saving us this year? Because we're not running summer school. Well, it's not really saving us anything because we're not. Uh, we didn't. We paid it. On we the didn't grant. pay for it to begin with. We were paying for it on the grant. It'll save us a little bit of money. Right. It'll save us like twenty grand because we were paying. You know, like some of the side people we were paying. Right. I don't know why I say so side like, people. So like you know, some of the things. You know what I mean? Non-teachers. Which now that we have by the state law, we had to have um, our both our principals and um, Caleb. We had those coaches. Um, because when you have um, an administrator on tenure track, they have to be mentored for two years. This culminates year two, yep. so then no longer we will have to have coaches. That also means in the administrative contract that nobody has to get paid for mentoring. So that's a cost savings of seventeen thousand. Um, you know, so I've picked in different things. I still don't have a number for the train maintenance contract that Caleb's talked about. I don't have um, a number for the PD for that we're getting through BOCES, you know, so even without having those certain things, we still look at a cost savings of 580,000. Which, um, which that, closes the but gap. But that does mean, you know, that would be um, some positions. And again, that puts us to pre-COVID right. Right. levels. Most of the stuff pre-COVID that we yeah. were getting grants for and stuff we're doing away with. Exactly. Well, but, you know, so that that we'll, does you know, mean positions. Used to be teachers and people were like lunch care, you know, lunch uh, aides. Exactly. You know, now we have people coming in and doing that. And that's well, and that's if we want to go back to pre-COVID. So I did include those positions. Yeah. Right. As far as the savings, but you know, five hundred eighty-one thousand dollars that kind of covers that's up the hole. That's pretty significant. It is. That covers the five seventy-seven. And, and we're not cutting. And then we're and we're, we're not, we're not jobs. touching program. We, you know, we're not cutting major jobs. We're cutting pre-COVID jobs. Mm -hmm. We're not cutting sports. We're not touching the kids. Things that they not got. Not instructional, really. There's not nothing instructional. instructional. Right. So. And I, that's. I, th I think we should, you know, we should definitely do this, whether. Hochul does what she wants to do in Albany or, or she doesn't. Even if she still stays status quo, we should do this. I agree for the fact I, of... I, my feelings are. That, that, well, that's my personal opinion. My opinion is the fact of if <coughs> Hochul continues with the electrification of buses mandate, mm -hmm. it is, you know, a largely unfunded mandate. Yes, there's programs out there that don't touch the cost. We have to come up with a way to deal with that and that is going to come down the pike sooner and also i want to make sure we are fiscally prudent mm -hmm. and right. we need to go back to pre-covid i agree yeah. i agree because even if she cut even if she doesn't cut a six hundred thousand, she's looking to do it next year right yeah, yeah. well and, and then we'll we have gonna, a, where are we and now so we're going to go against the cap this year we're going to that's it yeah happen going to the cap going, going to yeah. the cap. well as long as she gives me cap. no raises we've always got to go to the cap so each year she comes out even if she doesn't cut us if she comes out and says we're giving you no raise and and 2.9 well, she's going to propose this again next year yeah probably we've, we've basically been put on notice so yeah. where do we cut that next year to try to make it work then well then you got difficult decisions well exactly. so here's here's the one thing we're trying to we're hoping to be able to do not that i should maybe telegraph this but there's a lot of potential retirees even if we only get half of what, the people that have said they're going to mm -hmm we'll be fine with that so if this bridge is two we need two years to get to that point then we're in a whole different ball game mm -hmm. all right and then we'll we'll see kind of where we're at and then we've got some other retirements coming i mean i've got um i've done some of the math we've got like six seven eight hundred thousand dollars but savings. at some point she's going to throw it against the wall and it's going to stick yep right and that's going to be where we're going to have to be prepared for it that's why i say these cuts should be done this year yeah so, my personal opinion and again, like some of the spaces I don't have, like for the train, so that'll be added. So it is. We'll huge get savings. some more info too on like um, workers' compensation. So I don't know if it's this year or next year, and I'm waiting for the for the quote. It's going to drop heavily. So what had happened was we had one big workers' comp right. claim. Mm -hmm. We were in a consortium, and how they determine your percentage of the rate is they take your last five years' claims, claims. and whatever portion of that is to the total claims is the portion that you have to pay of the bill. The year that that drops off, we'll go from 250 down to like 140 something. So we'll save 100 grand on workers' comp. As long as you don't have another case. Exactly. As long as, that, yes, correct, correct. You never know. That's true. Know what's That's true. I should. And you're just gonna. Oh. Yeah, just jink, don't jink us. So yes. long as I'm not. But I'm. Well, I'm talking with Caleb. But if I don't have a case, yes, it will drop considerably. But I'm saying there's still. It's early. Well, now it's mid-February, but it's mid-February. There's still info trickling in about what things are going to be next year and i put the worst 
case scenario. Case scenario in this. Yeah, you have to. You have so to. once information comes in and I see that it's not the worst case, I'll start adjusting this. Mm -hmm. This will get a little easier. But to. to your point, yes, I do think you still need to make those kinds of decisions because you've got to build a buffer right. so that we can put money aside too. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's I, I'm so, sorry to keep gathering you in for the bad news, but it's not. Uh, any other you know, she doesn't Everybody seem. Good? It doesn't seem like it's gonna be something that just like goes away. So we're all good. Yes. Yep. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Oh, um, second. Or I'll make the motion. Sorry. <laughs> Made by Stacy, second by Nancy. Thought right. you were making the motion. I went a little over, but not. <laughs> we're all set, Jed.